Yes, we're back for another exciting edition of Football Cruise on Ninja Footballers TV. Well, quite a lot happened this past weekend. Uh, I'm not alone in the studio. I have my guys with me in the studio. I don't do this alone. On my far left, I have Ademola Adedun. Ademola, how are you today? Yeah, good to be here. You know, great weekend of football. Uh, Osima scored this past weekend. I wanted to, I to not, also take I on that. Not to correct, <laughs> but I hope Nigerians are forgiving me anyways. <laughs> Hopefully, you get forgiven. But good to have you on the show, anyways. Yeah, uh, Lamit, how are you doing? Fine, fine. I'm good. Um, the weekend was um, filled with lots of football, so yeah, it was good. All right, so uh, a lot happened this past weekend. Of course, we're still building up to that game against Ghana for that crucial World Cup qualifiers. Uh, there's interesting stories coming out this past weekend that uh, with the stadium be ready, I mean, talking about the Cape Coast Stadium in Ghana, will it be ready for that game? Myself and the guys will be doing, uh, giving our opinions, our thoughts on that on the show as the show progresses. Stick around. We're going on a quick break now. We'll be right back on Football Cruise. Welcome back, guys. It is still Football Cruise on Ninja Footballers TV. Just before we went on that quick break, we were talking about uh, the game against Ghana. Mm. Uh, stories came out this past week that the venue for the game, I mean, the Cape Coast Stadium, yeah. we saw images of how, how bad the, the, mm. the pitch has gone. Yeah. Um, of course, Ghana, they had their independence, the uh, rally on the pitch. I mean, talking about Africans and doing rallies on stadiums for national team games. I mean, what can you say about that? I mean, looking at the pitch, it poor state of the pitch, yeah. At the end, I mean, uh, you look at it, at the end of the day, it just shows the poor maintenance culture, you know, yeah. we're still struggling with in this part of the world as a continent, really, you know, far out and wide. And um, if if an arena is set for sports activities, let it just remain for sports activities. You know, these are the kind of things we see over the years, the time past, that affects the maintenance of our stadiums yeah. and stuff like that. And, you know, we are how many days or weeks down to the, you know, qualifiers? News like this should not be, you know, popping up and stuff like that. But on the part of Nigerians, it just helps us to know how unprepared, you know, it might affect them. So I think it's just down on us to capitalize on things like this happening to them. So yeah, that's you know, to, I mean, bringing it to the, to the Nigerian angle. I mean, we've seen recent images of the Teslin Balungu Stadium. I mean, this was a stadium that hosted Super Eagles games before. But I mean, we've seen the state of the pitch now, and looking at this as well, does it does it bring any memories to you, any similarities? I mean, to we can well? relate. That's, <laughs> the, that's the unfortunate mm. thing. Like yeah. we can relate. We yeah. understand True. it. That's why I agree with everything he said. I mean, this is a, this is a, this is a, this is a problem that has. Uh, that's affected Africans in, in I can't even I can't even I can't even Fatou. picture when because it's been a long time. This it's just really embarrassing. And like I like I was telling a friend of mine, I said, don't get it twisted. This would absolutely have no impact in that football game because yeah. those guys are probably also used to it. Yeah. So they are also ready. They just blew the um whistle for the commencement of the game and they will just start. It, it has not. We are used to it already. <laughs> so the other option might be for them to, you know, switch countries for the venue. You know, there are reports that they could play in Morocco, or you know, in Benin Republic. But I mean, just after these images were was trending online, uh, the National Sports Authority in Ghana came out to see they've been working on the stadium. They released another image, although some persons are still doubting it might be photoshopped and all that but, <laughs> but we don't know i just hope they you know get the stadium right on time for for the game but do you want to see a change of venue how would it be to an advantage for nigeria if it happens i think definitely yeah on looking at the side of nigeria it's definitely going to be um you know a plus for us because at the end of the day whether you like it or not they are still playing away from home you know so i um, not playing in cape coast not playing in you know ghana we definitely have that mental toll on them and um, when you're at home, you know, you feel that confidence, you know, most especially when you're playing in front of your fans. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's, it's, it's down for us, for the Super Eagles to capitalize on that. So hopefully there is a change. Uh, you know, but it's still on a, on a plain level yeah, playing yeah, surface yeah. for both teams. Do you see that as much of an advantage for Nigeria if the venue has been changed and, and all that? Um, of course, it would be an advantage, of course, as in you're not, you're not playing in Ghana. Uh -huh. So that's a no-brainer. That's obviously an advantage. But but I feel um, I feel it would just it would kill the originality of this tie. True though. Yeah. 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 True. I, I, as as much as I want us to qualify and I I want anything that that favors us, you know, like I'm not gonna complain. But I still feel I still want this tie. This is the Nigerian Ghana tie, and I want us to play in Ghana. I'm I care less. I care less about the I'm atmosphere. Beat right them now. in Ghana. <laughs> you know, I want them to. I want us to beat them in Ghana. <laughs> Come to Nigeria, beat them in Nigeria. That's it. So I don't, I don't want this Morocco. We just kill. It will take something away from the tie. It might still be in Cape Coast, 
you know, they are, we calf are still in, you know, mm. inspecting the pitch. So there's he's not taken away yeah, entirely yeah, out of yeah. Cape Coast Stadium in Ghana, but you know, there are inspections going mm. on. So I think before the end of the week we get to know yeah. and hopefully the Ghana squad as well would have been out because there there were also reports that some funny strategies of them holding the squad list and all that. <laughs> I don't know. We really don't know really don't know what that is. I think it's just part of the concealing you know, a lot of managers used to do is back then in football, but then just even just an hour to a game now. But you have to release it. at the end of the day, it needs to be released. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's FIFA standard, anyways. But yeah, let's. I let's think we know they'll probably put on. <laughs> so I don't know the reason why they are. Okay, so the only name that will scare me is probably if I start seeing names like Lamptey and Odoy, and they've probably convinced those guys yeah. to play for them. Mm. But, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. So why are they. Ju- I mean, for me, just, just unnecessary. Let's get. Let's, you, you know, you've touched on two players that might that might eventually be for Ghana. Let's let's get into their squad now. Um you know, there are reports this past weekend that uh Sally Sudiga South yeah. Downton has turned down an approach mm-hmm. from Ghana. We also saw Chris Hutin, the technical advisor of Ghana, you know, analyzing some Premier League games this past weekend. No now how how big of a threat is this Ghana squad? I mean Thomas Party scored this past weekend. Mm. You know, how big of a threat is this Ghana squad compared to Nigeria looking at that game? I think between when they left the Afghan and now mentally on the administrative level they must have had a lot of work to do because all i could see in the afcon was disunity i didn't see that um synergy you know for them as a team and i i think it should or it still might affect them and they have single players you could see you have they have individuals you can single out and say okay you know what i think these guys might be threats you know, just like you mentioned, you know, Ty Lante and the likes. He has not agreed. He's not agreed yet. So oh, yeah, yeah, but 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 if he does anyways. And the captain, we all know what happened with him. So that should be a plus for Nigeria as well, because when you obviously when you're the head, uh, we all know how far that goes. But yeah, I wouldn't really say speaking of party as well, I, I don't think I'm as scared because We saw him we saw him at the Afghan. Yeah, so. yeah, wait, we saw apart from that, he doesn't have what he has in Arsenal in Ghana, anyways. So I wouldn't really say um my heart. But is to be fair, he's probably playing his best brand of football since he came to Arsenal. Do you agree that, that he doesn't have this what he had at Arsenal in yeah, Ghana? Yeah, I kind of agree. But because there was an sorry, there was an interview that came out for him in Arsenal when they said he should rate himself. And so okay. since he rated himself four over ten since joining Arsenal, for Arsenal, he has been fantastic since then. So I wouldn't really relate that. No, that's what I'm saying. I still think uh, is yeah we can give uh, credit to the other players playing around him, but I think he probably makes all of them f- way better now. Yeah. I mean, he's the guy as far as I'm concerned. He's the guy, and that's probably the only guy who probably warriors. Cause if Ghana takes over the midfield, that's a problem. Yeah, and we don't want that to happen. And uh, so I want to go back to talk about the captain, the Ghana captain. Yeah, I was, I was about to go there. How big of a miss will, will it be for, for the you know Ghana what? national team? I think team? this is a big advantage for the Ghanaians. At least mentally. For oh, the Ghanaians. Do you know why I think so? for the Ghanaians. Do you know why I think so? At the AFCON, I saw something about him. Yeah, he scored a very brilliant goal. But I think it's very, it's too individualistic. Mm. You know, he wants to do things his way. And if you realize, if you, if you, if you, if you remember, when he got sent off, yeah. Then the Ghanaians had to come down from two goals down with a with, with, with ten men and mm-hmm. they played like probably a bad brand of football in the nation's cup entirely when you go. I think it's very, very individualistic and I would have preferred he played actually play because I think he likes to do things his own way and so him being yeah. absent gives him that feeling. Yeah, I think so. I personally room. think so. So yeah, that's that's what I think about him. I think um, Well for me it's just from the mental angle, you know, when you have someone in your squad that for so many years has been respected. You know, he 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 brings that charisma, commands and, respect, yeah, yeah. And stuff like that. I just feel him being absent will take a mental toll on the team. You know, it's like when you're going for war and your leader, you know, in time past is not yeah. you. You know, but yeah, um, I, I'm really keen to see how that will affect them. Anyway. They they've got some couple of uh, boosts as well. You know, defender Nicolas Mpoku, you know, was back in the Amiens squad this past weekend. So you know, they are gradually, uh, we are gradually waiting to see what mm. their squad will entail. We've seen reports that they are trying to call back uh, Muntari back to the national team. You know, this is a, this is a guy who's I mean, we've known him you know during the, during the past with his time as Ghana, and as well Kevin Prince Boateng, you know, some <laughs> ex internationals have respons- urged have res- urged you know the, the management the FA. For this? Is this like uh, you know, something Ghanaians are? They, they are doing all they can to just again, get one against the, super, against the Super Eagles. So. You know, this again, like you said, this yeah, brings me back sorry, to yeah. the Super Eagles now. Um, August Negavon has come out to admit. That he wants Victor Moses 
back in the national team. You know, he's established contact. You already said he's spoken with him. You know, what, what's it with bringing back players that have retired? I mean, we saw with Igalo. We thought it was a joke. Now, Egafon has come out openly to admit that he wants Victor Moses. What, you know, why Victor Moses? I'm, I'm not going to outrightly condemn bringing back, you know, I should like to say legends in quotes. But I think f- <laughs> legend in quotes. We threw that word. <laughs> we didn't call Moses a, a super I mean, okay, legend. You know, experienced in quotes. Okay. Anyways. But for some reason, we can, we can legit see why we don't really grow on the national side in terms you know in terms of african football because these are the kind of things that keep you know keeps happening um how do we move forward from this i know we need all the experience we can but i don't see the much when you m- say we even need all the experience i just want to is victor moses more experienced than ahmed musa so what well, experience does Moses want to add to that national? I mean, he's, he's 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 been around. He's played for us. Okay. That's 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 some you kind know, of question. Yeah, you know? experience I made, Musa. Yeah, definitely. But at the end of the day, in terms of um, the, those the numbers of appearances, you know how much he has uh. brought and stuff like that. I think I made Musa you know is more experienced. Young, so yeah, definitely, you know he's right. And talking about Victor Moses and uh, our style of play, we saw Simmons. You know, he's been scoring headers ever since he started wearing the mask. You know crosses that's coming in you, and yeah. that's one thing victor moses does very well right. so do you think that might be why he's being considered to come back to the national Look, team let me be very honest i feel this is just lazy coaching this is just lazy coaching as far as i'm concerned i'm a big fan of Eguavo, and i i rooted for him i wanted him to keep the job full time but this is just there's absolutely no reason the same thing for igalo okay the NFF president and Gennett Raw came out and said they were bringing Igalu back to the squad because the coach liked him and stuff. Now Gennett Raw is done. Igalu is still what there. What excuse do you have? So, for what excuse do you have for this guy now? Moses? What excuse do you have? For Mo- we have plethora of wingers. Like that's always been we, experience. The that's, that's always that been the experience. Is, see, the wingers that we have now, the level is just ridiculous. Should I start calling names? Well, I mean, I mean to be honest, now? to be honest, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not happy about the whole thing. But when we bring in experience, actually, a subsection of the Nigerian team yeah. are young. And it's, it's See, let's not go there. Don't we have the experience? I know why Looking I'm at the defenders, Balogun is experienced. Ahmed Musa is still there. Well, what about the, from the angle of the fact that he might not necessarily just play? You know, it goes a lot beyond what you see on the pitch. There is a camp. There is training. There is so much, there's, so, there's a lot of things. And then you see how much it impacts on the boys on the pitch. If, necess- if it doesn't end up even... You know, touching the ball on the, on the you know on the field of play, that is the only point of argument I can raise in favor of Augustine Gavoy for this. But on the aspect of so many things like growth, in terms of needing him, I don't really see why this had to happen. Look, uh, so so before you say something, I wanted to say something now. Yeah, so we look at these players. Yeah, great players, and like I said, I don't have anything against Victor Moses, but I'm looking at him and I'm like, so why didn't we call this guy when we're hustling for the qualification tickets you know why mm. are they picking and choosing because that's what as, as far as i'm concerned i know somebody will say oh yeah that was um getting raw this is a new coach but it still does not matter this guy did not follow us to the nation's cup why is he now coming to play a very important game versus ghana i mean this always happens whenever like, it's, I don't it's, it's a world cup like, here I we just see players from out of the blue I just mean, comes probably, into the national we'll team qualify for the world cup i will see like two new names it would happen we will see names that we never thought we would, we would hear of again if we eventually go back for the work. These things are just, like I said, that's why I said this is very, this is lazy coaching, you know. I know he's trying to stick with the guys that he's, he's, yeah. been, he's, he's seen, like, throughout his coaching. He's always been in the coach, coaching setup, so he's safe with those set of players. But uh, come on, guys, yeah, we, are, we have lots of players uh, now, just stick with them. I mean, uh, like I said, the excuse has always been experience. You can, mm-hmm. you can see him as well for Onazi, he was in the standby list, yeah, you yeah. know. He brings the experience to the team. And, and, you know, these are players who've done it before. Again, Onazi, it's been a while we saw him in the national team. But, I mean, because of the experience, he's on the standby. So, if it's looking like it, if any midfielder gets injured, he might just... Because he's the only midfielder on standby. Like, like, if you look like, at it. Like, like I'm saying, we might not necessarily see these guys on, on the field of play. Um, you know, it, it just might as well go beyond the pitch. 